My name is Yelena Rachitsky and I work at Facebook Reality Labs. Six years ago, I remember putting on a virtual reality headset for the first time. What I saw wasn't actually very exciting. I was sitting in a virtual movie theater. It didn't look that great and I was watching a movie and I was watching a movie completely by myself. Why would that be exciting enough for me to jump into VR? Well, what I thought at that moment was that if just being here feels that transportive, a low polished movie theater watching a random movie by myself, then what else can VR be capable of beyond gaming? So, I jumped right in. Six years later, I'm still here, and I've experienced many mind-blowing moments that it can confirm that my initial hunch about the potential of this medium was right. Today, I want to touch on two categories I care a lot about and where I put more of my daily focus. And this is just a small slice of what VR can do. The first is how VR can meaningfully bring people together. The second is how VR can enable new modes of creation and self-expression. So let's get into the first one. So as you can see, I'm embodied here in this virtual space. I have a nice little couch and a room. Um, I'm an avatar, but I'm alone. The thing that's incredible about VR is that at any moment, a friend can actually join me. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, Yuna, <laughs> how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? I'm doing great. So, although Yez and I are in different cities, I'm in LA and he's in San Francisco, it actually feels like we're hanging out. Exactly. It's great to see you, you know. Great to see you. Bringing people together is the true magic of VR, and it's core to almost everything that we try to do. VR chat and Altspace are examples of two applications that I've had a lot of fun in. VR chat is an ever-growing social world where regular consumers contribute by building worlds and events. My friends and I even created a clubhouse where everyone meets up on a Wednesday night to hang out. There's even dance clubs in VR chat where people compete in break dancing. The world continuously evolves. Altspace is an events platform where you can join or host your own event. A few weeks ago, I spoke at a conference they actually have these incredible hosting tools allow me to speak to hundreds of people, answer questions during Q&A, and customize the space to form the theme of the event. I actually felt like I was at a real event. And with people even coming up to me virtually after I spoke. The best part was that I didn't even have to change out of my gym clothes or get on a flight. My avatar had perfect hair and there was no creases in my clothes, as you can see now. Here at Facebook, we're creating our own social experiences with Horizon and Venues. Horizon is a social first place, a place where you can explore, you can play, and you can create. You can join together with people around the world in ever-expanding adventures and experiences. I actually hopped into Horizon just last week and entered a world where I was fighting retro space invaders. The most memorable part of the experience was that I was playing while the creator of the world was in there with me, chatting about his ideas on how he was gonna continue building on what he made. It really personalized the experience and it made me feel like I was a true part of that world. This is really just the beginning of Horizon, but take a look for yourself.
Oculus Venues is the place to watch events with other people, like sports, concerts, comedy, and more. Especially during this time of COVID, this is one of the few places you can gather to go to a live event. I've danced and gotten my sweat on to Major Lazer, to Charlie, and many more musicians. But one memorable moment was when I hopped into venues to see the SpaceX launch of the Dragon rocket. It was an exciting moment. It was the first of its kind for SpaceX. But with COVID, I haven't seen my brother for months. He's been quarantining in San Francisco, and I've been here in Los Angeles, and I missed him. We were both able to jump into venues and watch the launch together. We were surrounded by my colleagues and we were surrounded by strangers. And I still remember that countdown with the audience cheering. It felt like Lenny, my brother and I were actually together. And we made a memory that we remember and still talk about now. Take a look at some of the things that venues has to offer. In addition to connecting with friends and strangers, VR will soon be the place that can be used for having meetings that feel like you're actually in person with your colleagues from around the world. Video conferencing, as we probably all know, can only get us so far. And we're looking to VR as a solution for both entertainment and the future of work. The second opportunity that VR has to offer is around creativity and self-expression. I really believe that when you enter VR, it makes you feel more playful and creative. Be able to embody anything and be anywhere. I've talked about some of the creativity that's happening in social worlds like Horizon and VR Chat, with things like world building, but the opportunity is so much more. I wanted to touch on two parts, performance and art. I have a love for theater, especially immersive theater. There's very few things as powerful when you get close to an actor in real life while they're bringing me on an adventure. This last year, my dream of bringing immersive theater into VR actually became a reality with a project called The Tempest. The Tempest is a 45-minute ticketed show in VR. It has live actors who can be stationed anywhere in the world. All they have to do is put on a Quest headset, nothing else and they're able to create an experience that can only be done in VR. It's about you and five other people at a time. Your actor gives you a part to play. I was Miranda and I got to marry Ferdinand. You're not just an observer, you're an integral part of the play. The actor also has the power to make things fall out of the sky, have costumes appear on you and transport you to many worlds. You participate in the magic unfolding in this loose retelling of Shakespeare's play of the same name. Here's a bit of what it looks like. Let's set the stage. Put on your headset. Imagine a ship at sea. The illusion of a storm, a tempest, a production sunk, a theater closed. But I, the actor, am live, ready to perform my role. Good Prospero will bring the play to life with the help of my magic and you, my spirits. We are ready now to perform together. Approach my aerial. Come. Beyond the Tempest, I'm beginning to see performances pop up all over the place in VR chat, Horizon, and Altspace. Everyday VR consumers are using available tools to create their own shows, everything from a drama play to improv nights. And as our tools improve and we continue to lower the barrier of entry for user-generated performance, I expect more unique experiences to emerge. I've also really been inspired by a tool on our platform called Quill. Quill is a VR art tool where you can draw in space. Instead of drawing and animating on a flat surface like we're used to in traditional mediums, you can actually draw all around you. As an artist, you can take the images that are living in your head and allow other people to truly live in them. You can draw and animate just using VR. You don't need anything else. 
We're seeing creators make animated stories, interactive comics, and just daily drawings that allow people to enter those worlds. It's hard to express the beauty of what people can make on video, but take a look at some of the things that have been made yourself. Today, I talked about what's available now, but I'd really like to emphasize the point that the true promise of VR is being a gateway for whatever passion you may have and a place to connect with any community you might belong to or might want to belong to. We're still just scratching the surface of what's possible and looking to ensure your experience in VR is a comfortable and a safe one. Thank you for listening. I look forward to bumping into you in VR one day.